Professor Dr. Balasubramanyam, working as assistant professor in the Department of Zoology, Government First Grade College and uh, PG Center, Chintamani. And, uh, and uh, this syllabus belongs to the Bangalore North University, uh, Kolar. And today we are going to discuss about the general cats of class apes. Class apes or birds. See, here we can see various types of birds and all these birds belong to the Carinidae. So that means they have keel or Carina. Now here we see some of the birds like robin birds, peacock, wax wings, lap wing, myna, poppy, hornbill, eagle, pigeon, kingfisher, parrot. Likewise, so many birds are there in the universe. Now, here another some of the birds. We see different types of birds like sparrow, strooks, penguins. All this belongs to the class uh, birds. Now, this topic general cats of yews or birds. Now, yews or birds are considered as monsters of air by Young in 1986. Now, why we call the birds as a monsters of air is simply because each and every part of the birds is well adapted to the aerial mode of life. So that means they are well adapted to flying. And these birds have most unique characters, particularly with the reference to the other vertebrates. So therefore, the birds are considered as the most fascinating group of vertebrates since their behavior, anatomy, morphology, instincts and parental care are unique in the entire group of vertebrates. So to say behavior means the birds have so many types of behavior like example nesting behavior or courtship or mating or different types of the singing behavior and uh, alarm calls some birds also have alarm calls and when the birds are very happy so they give the other type of uh, the singing nature see anatomy means the internal characters of the birds are very very unique again they are adapted to the aerial mode of life see morphology means the external features of the birds is usually the birds are having a boat shaped body and covered with the feathers and the birds have instincts so they have some innate characters like for example incubation like for example protection from the enemies and the parental care is very very unique in the entire group of vertebrates next slide see birds are well defined group of vertebrates so mean to say so in the vertebrates we find uh, fishes and uh, before fishes we have agneta and fishes and followed by amphibians followed by reptiles followed by birds and finally by mammals see these birds are entirely different from the other group of vertebrates so they are clearly different from the other group of vertebrates so in fact the study of birds is called ornithology the study of birds is called ornithology next character they form the homogeneous group than any other class of vertebrates see that's what homogeneous 
So they have the special group of animals which don't have the overlapping characters with that of the mammals or with that of the reptiles or with that of the amphibians. Further, they have strong marked characters such as distinguish hardly any other class of vertebrates. So strongly marked characters like for example aerial mode of life, like bipedal locomotion, though they belong to the tetrapoda, but they show the bipedal locomotion and uh, the birds have the feathers and uh, the birds have the boat shaped body and uh, they are adapted to the aerial mode of life. Next slide. So this again further continuation of the general characters of birds. The body of birds is a boat shaped, a streamlined or spindle shape to reduce the friction while moving in the air. So I meant to say these uh, ends of the birds, ends of the birds under the anterior and the posterior are pointed while the center is broad. The center is broad while the anterior and posterior are pointed. That's what the meaning boat shaped or streamlined or spindle shape. So to reduce the friction while the animal is moving in the air. Further, the body is divisible into head, neck, trunk and tail. So here we find four distinct regions in the birds. The body is divisible into head, neck, trunk and tail. Further, the body is covered with the feathers as exoskeleton and uh, these uh, air breathing animals and warm blooded are homeotherms. So with reference to the birds, so why they are so unique with reference to other vertebrates, here we should remember the birds body temperature is 42 degrees centigrade, while that of the mammals is 37 degrees centigrade, while that of the lower animals that is the reptiles, the amphibians and the fishes, they are poiclotherms. So that means the body temperature varies according to the environment while well, here the body is constant and the body temperature is constant the warm blooded animals where the body temperature is 42 degrees centigrade much much higher than the all other vertebrates so therefore these birds form the unique group of animals and the oviparous that is egg laying animals and bipedal flying vertebrates that means though they belong to the tetrapoda but uh, they have the two-legged locomotion, that is the bipedal flying vertebrates. Further, the forelimbs are modified as wings for flying. The forelimbs are modified for as wings as flying. So in the case of the birds, the forelimbs are modified with the wings. So, so therefore, so these uh, forelimbs are not involved in the, so to say, catching the food. Uh, are, are locomotion. So though the wings are used for locomotion, but uh, this four limbs are modified to the wings. So here the locomotion by wings we know, but uh, in other tetrapods, so four limbs are used for walking or in the case of the human beings, the four limbs are used for various purposes. Like for example, writing or holding some objects or for example eating. So here the birds uh, they are not used for the eating purposes or for uh, catching the objects. Further the hind limbs or legs are variously adapted for perching, food capture. So because the four limbs are modified to the wings so the hind limbs are used for food capture swimming, wading, running, walking, etc. Sometimes scratching also, like in the case of the hens. So here we see the body of the bird, where we see the streamlined body, that's what we're talking about here. 
the both ends are pointed and the head is z and there is a mobile neck uh, so we have the atrocellus vertebra where the birds can see 360 degree centigrades in a circle they can observe that uh, we people cannot do we can see in 180 degree angle but the birds can see in a 360 degree circle so streamlined body powerful flight vessels four limbs are modified to the wings and uh, light but strong pneumatic bone skeletal framework and approaching toes, bipedal locomotion, short tail, bearing long retreats, light insulating feathers, and streamlined body. So here, this is a clear-cut morphology of the bird. Further, the general characters of the birds: skin is dry, devoid of glands, except the oil or praying glands at the root of the tail, and here you should also remember the skin is elastic since the skin is elastic so this uh, flying becomes so much easy or flexible because of the loose uh, elastic nature of the skin which helps in flying the pectoral muscles are very well developed in the case of the birds and these pectoral muscles are used for flight and these pectoral muscles are attached to the keel or carina, and uh, these pectoral muscles are referred to as the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and the coracobrachialis. These are the flight muscles where this bird is helpful for flying. So sometimes uh, some authors also refer the birds as flying machines because they keep on flying all the time. Skull is smooth and monocondylic, bearing single occipital condyle. Now, skull is smooth means so the sutures are so much closely, intimately attached. So, we just if we see the skull, just we resemble that it is just we see like a single skull, but in fact, uh, there are so many bones are there. Like, for example, frontal bones, parietal bones, occipital bones, temporal bones, uh, so many bones are fused and the uh, skull becomes smooth. And single occipital condyle is present. Further, the bones are rheumatic or hollow or hair filled with no bone marrow. Usually, there is no fusion of bones. So, this is another very peculiar characters of the birds which helps in flight. And the bones are hollow or rheumatic. So, these again uh, the general characteristics, uh, internal anatomy of the birds. Uh, the other slide we saw the morphology of the bird, and uh, here we see the internal anatomy of the bird where you can see that uh, four limbs are modified to the beaks, four limbs are modified to the beaks, and the buccal cavity is there. And here, here the esophagus is enlarged to form the crop. Further, there is a gizzard, so crop for storage of the seeds, and gizzards for uh, grinding the seeds. Since the birds have, don't have teeth. So this gizzard is a very special structure, just helpful for the grinding the seeds and followed by the intestine and followed by the duodenum and uh, ileum and uh, uh, cecum and uh, rectum and anus. And we here you find the kidneys and uh, uh, ureter and we don't find the, we don't find the urinary bladder and the kidney is a metanephric kidney and the lungs are there. And here we find the brain and uh, the spinal cord. So, this is a, another important character where we see the respiration, where we have the lungs and uh, the air sacs are there. So, there is a very special uh, significance of the air sacs. So, here they help in the buoyancy, they also help in the cooling the body temperature. Further, general characters of the birds. So, here the upper jaw and lower jaw are modified to the beaks. So, this is another important character. So, the upper jaw and lower jaw modified to the beaks and the beaks also with the help of the feet, uh, they are helpful for the feeding purposes. The vertebra is heterocellus, that is the neck vertebra heterocellus are saddle shaped. So, this is the purpose uh, where the bird can see in the 360 degree centigrade or one in circle you can see that uh, the birds can see while sitting in one place they have a uh, sight of uh, all round is circle or in the whole wide view that uh, the birds can see. So, some th some thoracic vertebrae are fused from the syn sacrum. So, 
to some um, bones are fused to form the syncecrum in the vertebral column so some thoracic bones and uh, the uh, thoracic bones and uh, the lumbar bones and uh, the, uh, the followed by the uh, coccyx bones all these bones are fused to form the syncecrum and further the sternum is large uh, vertical with the mid ventral keel for attachment of large flight muscles further characters general characters of the birds so the birds uh, the pelvic girdle is large and strong and fused with the syncecrum and the acetabulum is perforated so here this pelvic girdle that is the lower part of the birds is uh, large and strong and uh, here we find in the pelvic girdle we find this uh, the attachment of the lower limbs there is a legs attachment so acetabulum is a perforated and the pelvic girdle has a three parts the ilium and uh, ichium and the pubis further uh, the internal anatomical characteristics of the birds uh, the, the, the digestive system is complete uh, with the presence of uh, the mouth and the anus and uh, the digestion is uh, extracellular and esophagus is dilated to form the crop for quick feeding and storage this is followed by the muscular gizzard for mastication or training the seeds uh, since the birds lack the teeth so in the absence of the teeth so this is the teeth purpose the teeth function is performed by the gizzard further with respect to the circulation the heart is four chambered with the complete double circulation so two auricles and two ventricles and uh, uh, the rbc is nucleated red blood corpuscles or erythrocytes are nucleated the respiration by means of compact uh, spongy and non distensible lungs uh, continuous with the air sacs so that's what we talked about the air sacs so, so they help in the buoyancy and they help in the cooling the body temperature and they also increase the efficiency of the respiration so this is the purpose of the air sacs uh, in the case of the birds so therefore these uh, birds are said to be so so unique uh, because of all these reasons the birds are so much special and so much a fantastic uh, nature uh, animals uh, living on the earth so study this uh, birds so here you can find the lungs and uh, you can find this uh, air sacs uh, this uh, what happen uh, you find this uh, uh, this uh, what do you call this uh, trachea and we find here this is the voice box or the syrinx further uh, general characters of the birds so, so larynx uh, without the vocal cords now here the larynx don't have the vocal cords unlike in the case of the mammals so larynx is uh, not so much developed as in the case of the mammals but uh, no 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 matter this uh, the, the sound box or syrinx uh, is there to produce uh, uh, the voice or the sound lie at the uh, lie at or near the junction of the trachea and the bronchi so this is the position of the syrinx or the voice box so syrinx or voice box is a unique nature of the birds the kidney is a metanephric and uh, by three lobed uh, the urinary bladder is absent why this urinary bladder is absent to reduce the weight of the animal and these birds excrete the uric acid now why this uric acid is excreted because the birds have less accessibility to water and uh, this uh, uric acid is uh, least toxic and uh, it's not so much soluble in the water so that's why this uh, birds excrete the uric acid and the brain is uh, large and smooth so here the, compared to the amphibians and uh, reptiles so the birds is large and smooth uh, but not as developed as in the case of the mammals but no doubt uh, this uh, brain is very developed and large and smooth the cerebrum and uh, cerebellum and optic lobes are uh, greatly developed now you should remember here the brain has uh, covered by the meninges and uh, this brain has the optic lobes and uh, this uh, cerebellum is very well developed in the case of the birds and uh, this cerebellum is involved in the balance or equilibrium and cerebrum is also involved in the voluntary activities of the birds and uh, the memory and uh, the parental care and uh, all these activities are performed by the cerebrum and uh, the brain uh, that is a 12 pairs of cranial nerves are there in the case of the birds so this is another important character of the nervous system and uh, the olfactory organs are pure and uh, eyes are large with nictitic membrane so nictitic membrane which covers this so these birds don't have the eyelids but uh, the nictitating membrane is present in the case of the birds 
Further, you can see here the birds, that is the wings are broad and round wings with a uh, help of uh, this uh, robin tight spaces such as the in woods and defense undergrowth. So, wings are there and sexes are identical and uh, different posture and uh, songs to tell each other apart. Uh, only male right performs a tutorial song uh, in the late winter or spring. And eyes are large, enable the robin bird to see poor light. It begins feeding before the sunrise and continues after the dusk. Now, uh, your juvenile is uh, the young one is uh, dull brown and uh, mottled plumage camouflages uh, with the young robin until it grows the first adult plumage in the autumn. And foot is uh, the slender toes enable the robin to perch on the thin twigs and plant stems. And this uh, robin flicks its tail frequently when it's perched and uh, fans its uh, displays the aggression. Now this speciality of this uh, robin bird, why I took this robin bird, because here you can see the heartbeat of this bird is uh, very much higher. So it is estimated uh, around uh, 4 10 times uh, the heartbeats per minute. Now in the case of the man, the heart beats uh, 72 times per minute. But in the case of the robin birds, uh, it beats around uh, 400 times or 4 10 times per minute. So that is the nature of the heartbeat. So here the birds have high metabolism and that's why these uh, birds require the high heartbeat as well. And uh, this is another unique feature of the birds. So that's why you say these uh, birds are different from the other vertebrates. Now further, general characters of the eaves. So here the, the sexes are separate with sexual dimorphism. A single ovary with the oduct to reduce the body weight of the birds. So this is another special character of the birds. So here there is a single ovary unlike in the case of the mammals or in the case of the reptiles uh, we have two ovaries and uh, uh, here the single ovary is there and uh, oviduct uh, to reduce the weight of the body of the birds. So this is another special nature. So this also you can see in the case of the flight adaptations of the case of the birds uh, and fertilized internal and uh, preceded by copulation and courtship. Eggs are large uh, clonic uh, that means uh, the eggs are covered by calcareous shells. And the eggs are macrolithal, that means uh, they have a lot quantity of yolk. And uh, macrolithal or megalithal. So, lithal refer to the yolk, and uh, large quantity of yolk is there in the case of birds. And the, of course, this uh, eggs are telolithal, that means uh, the yolk is formed towards the vegetable pole. And when you see the orientation of the eggs, uh, we have the animal pole and the vegetable pole. And in the vegetable pole, we find this uh, uh, yolk is there. And external incubation is there in the case of the birds. So, these birds, uh, for example, we see in the case of the hen, our uh, country hen. Uh, so, in the local uh, region, uh, in the village side, we can find the hens. Uh, they incubate the eggs around 21 days uh, continuously without uh, uh, without getting from that place. Uh, so, they sit in one place. Incubation all the time, 21 days uh, without uh, the food and without uh, the so called uh, water or uh, sometimes uh, so so lot of uh, uh, patience is required uh, particularly finding because of the females uh, there is a incubation incubation so 21 days uh, they use the uh, what you call this uh, warmth uh, to the eggs and uh, that warmth is required for the development of the uh, embryo and uh, finally the, after 21 days uh, this uh, uh, the young ones come out from the egg and cleavage is discoidal and uh, myroblastic and uh, this here there is a blasto disc is there in the yolk in the blasto disc itself uh, this uh, cleavage takes place so therefore it is a myroblastic unlike in the case of the frogs it is a holoblastic but in the case of the birds is the, the cleavage is a myroblastic and the development is a direct that means the development is direct means uh, so the young ones resemble the parents and newly hatched or precocial or immature in the case of the carinite, but in the case of the ratite, the newly hatched are matured. That means, uh, so they are independent. So here in the case of the carinite, they are dependent, but in the ratite, they are independent. Further characters of the general characters of the birds. Uh, so here the parent care is well developed. So that's what you see in the, in the, in the, in the, in the case of the incubation parameter or in the case of the uh, giving the food to the young ones. Uh, and uh, building the nest, uh, building the nest, uh, and a uh, lot of uh, building are giving the crop milk. Likewise, uh, so many characters are there in the case of the birds, uh, so that is uh, defines the parental care 
and they lay the eggs and they protect the eggs and also when you see the hens the young ones also protected by the mother so whenever the young ones are attacked by the enemies the mother just uh, attacks the enemies and uh, guards the young ones so this is the well defined parental care in the case of the birds there are amniotes uh, with the extramembranary membranes like amnion chorion allantas and yolk sac so we find the extramembranary membranes so, so in the case of the uh, birds so the birds uh, they lay the terrestrial eggs and in the terrestrial whenever these birds uh, the eggs are terrestrial so are these uh, animals or organisms are terrestrial we find this uh, uh, extramembranary membranes particularly with reference to the reptiles birds and mammals we find the extramembranary membranes that means uh, the amnion chorion allantas and yolk sac and examples of the birds uh, so, so so many examples are there that is a pigeon is there crow is there eagle ostrich uh, kiwi emu kingfisher swan hornbill duck uh, and uh, red night heron uh, spoonbill storks uh, bustard etc so many types of uh, the birds are there finally we see the references with reference to the general cats of the birds so we find this invertebrates by court paul is excellent textbook and uh, the uh, what breeds by jordan verma and uh, kavarna thayya and dami and dami and sin prasad so i sorry here it is invertebrates uh, wrongly mistake uh, or is a mistake is there so here that is you should see the vertebrates book sorry it is a vertebrate books uh, we should see in the case of the uh, birds or the chordates books Carded by Jordan Verma and uh, Ekamana Tayer and Dame and the Medicine Prasad. Okay, thank you for listening.